And now, time for something just a little bit different. In 1993, Sega was pitched an idea from their team at STI right around when Sonic Spinball was reaching the end of its development. Peter Morowick, I hope I said that right, the man behind a lot of Spinball and later on the cult classic Comic Zone was part of this pitch. The game was designed to be based around Sonic the Hedgehog, now commonly known as Sonic Sad Am by the fans, a cartoon that was running on ABC at the time of this pitch. If you do not know, Sad Am was probably the best video game adaption in another media when it came out. And it's still a really good cartoon to this day. And that goddamn theme song, man. Considering it started out looking like this. Yikes. It really does impress me how good this cartoon is. Considering the other Sonic cartoons from the 1990s. Like, those are bad. <laughs> Anyways. In the video pitch, we see more of a stealthy platforming game. Where Sonic is seen moving much slower than most of the other games around this time. And the other thing is... And another thing is that the gameplay from this demo seems to be way more complex than the other games. With Sonic using moves he had never used anywhere else. Like a ring toss ability and for some reason an even stronger spin move. At the end of this demo, we see Sonic meet up with Princess Sally from the Sad AM cartoons and the Archie comics. And they leave the level together. Confirming that other characters than Sonic and Robotnik would appear in the game. But not knowing if they would be playable or not. Which is nice. It was also said that the reason this game never went beyond this pitch is because Yuji Naka thought the game made Sonic look too slow. Which I would want to hear Naka's side of this because, you know, it's like kind of like a he said, she said situation and it seems like a ridiculous reason to cancel it. Since they could have easily upped his movement speed had the game gone into full development. Now, do I think it would have made a good game? That is kind of harder to say. I'm not a huge fan of the games that were designed at STI at the time. The team at STI had a habit of making their games feel a lot a lot of the time a little too odd to control or just flat out ridiculously hard. Sonic 2 is definitely the best thing they made, but other than that, Kid Chameleon is a cool concept, for example, with just small decisions that kind of average the game out. Comic Zone is unbelievably cool, but it's held back by its ridiculously high difficulty. The ooze is a game that left such a bad taste in my mouth I never want to play it again after a decade of not even touching it. Sonic Extreme was never finished, and honestly, Die Hard Arcade looks simple but fun. I worry that if this game was completed, either it would have had awkward level design choices like Spinball or Kid Chameleon, or it would have been way too hard like the Comic Zone. That being said, if someone put me in charge of this game, if it was greenlit too, and I could do whatever I wanted, this is what I would do. I did talk to DC Fan 200 about what I thought about this. So there's a little bit of credits to him for the inspiration to talk about this. And you know what, go check him out on YouTube and Twitter, you know. He's got some controversial ideas about Sonic, but you know, he's a cool guy. Alright, so this is a bit of a in a perfect world scenario, but leave me alone, this is a cool idea. Anyways, this would be a 2D pixel art game, ideally using a power level similar to the Sega CD. It would take advantage of a a round-ish Super Nintendo capable game with Mode 7 graphics and CD audio. It would work with a Sonic Adventure 2 type of gameplay where you switch between characters per levels. Sonic himself would probably have to switch between two different gameplays. One would be a high, higher speed like 2D mock section, kind of like Sonic 06 but you know good, for chase and escape levels and another slower style but not as slow and slightly different from what we see in the trailer. Why is that? Because what, because a lot of what we see here could work very well with for Princess Sally. Now I would see Sonic and Sally in these like styles control somewhat similarly. What could really separate them is the stealth mechanic here. Now Sonic, he's got abilities that like would help protect him against swap bots and stuff, so he could be more aggressive. Sally, no, she'd have to be way more cautious. I could see her using Nicole to hack her way through security doors as well. So, like, there is something there, I think. 
Another easy gameplay style to picture would be beat em up levels with Bunny. Since she's part robot, it could be really easy to imagine her with some pretty fun fighting moves to get through levels, and it would separate the pacing by quite a bit. Now, I'm not entirely sure where to incorporate more ideas for the Freedom Fighters, but I do think the focus should always be on Sonic. I do imagine smaller minigame levels where you have to ride Dulcie, you know, the dragon that was introduced, I believe, in Season 2 of Sat AM and a little bit later on in the comics. But I'm not sure where else to go with this, but I think this idea already is pretty solid. There would be a small, loose adaption of the plot of both versions of this world, both the comics and the show, but there's two specific arcs from the comic I want adapted, Mecha Madness and Endgame. Now, this is a very abridged, brief explanation, but in Mecha Madness, Sonic basically gets captured and actually roboticized in a metal Mecha Sonic. See, people think he did it on purpose to try out a tech that was used to um, keep the, the uh, user's mind and will solid outside of roboticization. But in all reality, Sonic wasn't going to go through with the plan, and he got uh, caught, basically. <laughs> In the comic, Knuckles has to be brought in to fight off Mecha Sonic in his own Mecha form. Now, there's an argument to be said that I didn't really want to include too much of the normal Sonic characters in this. So I could see it being slightly changed around so that it's the Freedom Fighters that have to figure out a way to defeat Mecha Sonic. Now, after this, because this is nearing the end of the game, this is where Endgame would start in. Now, Sonic is tr considered a traitor to the Freedom Fighters, and while escaping custody for apparently killing Sally, which he didn't do, he has to stop Robotnik from destroying the whole world in a massive crazy stunt with a major nuclear weapon. Please understand this is an extremely abridged version of what happens, and I don't expect a game built like a 16-bit game to be full of detail about this here, but I'd love for this to be the climax of the game, maybe about a third of the game in general, this and Mecha Madness being a third. I just honestly believe this could be an amazing game if it was made, with CD audio and some scaling and rotation effects thanks to the Sega CD, and given enough time this could be an amazing game. But that's just me, and doesn't have a whole lot to do with this particular pitch. It looks really cool, but I'm not too sure how far they could have gone with it. Did you know that this is apparently the very first version of what Sonic Extreme would try to be? So we literally got nothing out of this concept release then and be, just became a four year long circle jerk. Hey everyone, Blue Genocide here. Um, thanks so much for watching this video. I know there's some weird audio popping. I, I don't know how to fix that right now. So I apologize for that. Well, thank you for watching the whole video. This is kind of just a spur of the moment thing I decided to do. Um, again, thanks to DC Fan 200 for helping me think about this game again. I might do more of these like unreleased game videos. I don't know. I always found this kind of interesting stuff. I also apologize that there wasn't enough footage of Sonic 16, so I started using Sonic Mars. I didn't know what else to do. It's kind of the same idea. I don't actually know how it, you know, separated because according to people, this Sonic 16 is somehow related to it. All right, so there was a little bit of overlap there, but what Sonic Mars was is it's like a 1995 30, uh, 32x game. This isn't this isn't scripted, so it's so it's not what I wanted, but it's kind of giving you an idea of where Sonic Extreme went. So yeah, anyway, that's enough of that. Uh, I just wanted to say too that I have a Discord channel if anybody's interested. Uh, Subscribing would really help me right now. I'm really hoping I can get to 100 subscribers by the end of the year. And I just got a huge growth on the channel actually yesterday. So I'm really happy. But I just wanted to thank all of you for watching. And you all mean the world to me. I just wanted to say that out. I haven't figured out a streaming schedule yet. But I stream games. I play games. I play cartoons on the channel. I, I try to do a little bit of everything pop culture related. So... Expect a lot of different types of videos on this channel. After all, it's time for something just a little bit different. Alright, Blue Genesis out. Thanks guys.